ganhador de um Grammy, primeiro lugar na competição internacional de composição para violino em Indianápolis e figura frequente nas melhores salas de concerto do mundo. Esse é Augustin Radelich. O violinista ítalo-germânico foi o solista convidado da Filarmônica de Minas Gerais e a gente, é claro, aproveitou a vinda dele à capital mineira para conhecer mais sobre a carreira desse renomado músico. I started playing the violin when I was five years old and um, I started because I have two older brothers who were already playing music, they were playing piano and cello and so I was, for a few years before I started, I was actually hearing this music um, around the house and I wanted to play as well, so I, but I didn't pick the violin, I just, my parents gave me a violin and that's how I started. When I was growing up, I had, I had several inspirations. One, one of them was an Italian violinist called Uto Ugi uh, that I saw perform live and um, it was really, you know, I really, I wanted to be like him. So it was the sort of, uh, I really liked the sound. It, it was very inspiring. And then recordings by David Oistrach, another great violinist. I would listen to a lot of recordings. So those might be, uh, might have been inspirations, you know, when I, at a young age. Playing the violin or like learning the violin and practicing the violin, you know, it's not always fun because you, you reach points where you get where you get stuck, where you have a problem, it's not getting better, and you practice and practice and you get stuck. It can sometimes be frustrating. Also, as an adult, um, you can reach these kinds of roadblocks. And so it's very important um, to not lose touch of what you like about music. I think it's very important that it remains enjoyable, that you play pieces that you like and still find enjoyment, and that can get you past the moments when it feels like work. One big event was in 2006. I won a competition, a violin competition, in Indianapolis in the United States. And that was what really gave me a strong start to my, to my career as an adult. Um, before that, I was playing some concerts, I was keeping busy, but this was the, the time when a lot of people heard, from me for, heard about me for the first time. And so it's, um, my life changed a lot from one day to the, to the next. So that might have been the biggest event. Um, another, another type of breakthrough is um, when, I was, when I was getting started, sometimes another soloist might cancel a concert because they're sick. And that happened a few times. And one time that it happened in 2010, somebody canceled um, who was going to play with the New York Philharmonic. And then uh, about three days before the concert, I got a phone call, you know, can, can you play the Mendelssohn Concerto in three days? And this is a very sort of unexpected, sudden, sudden thing, but was a, was, was a huge opportunity uh, f for, for me. So that, there were these kinds of, these kinds of events that really, um, yeah, changed the career very much.
I don't really have a favorite composer. So I like a lot of, I like a lot of composers and a lot of pieces. So it, I find it very hard to pick. Brit, the Britain Concerto has become one of my favorite pieces. Um, I didn't, I actually did not know the piece at all until, let's say this, 15 years ago, I had never even heard about there being a Britain Violin Concerto. And many musicians hadn't either. It was played so rarely and the piece kind of started to be programmed more and more people started learning it and I heard about it and I was really struck by how great it is. And now it's become one of my favorite pieces. But I have a lot of other f favorites. So Sibelius Concerto, um, Bartok's Second Concerto, of course Mendelssohn, uh, of course Beethoven and Brahms, of course Tchaikovsky, of course. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Actually there's a lot more. Um, and then some of my favorite music pieces are not even for the violin. So like Schubert songs or so um, I, I, I can't really pick a favorite I think it's nice that we have so much repertoire <laughs> As a violinist, there are, dis there are different aspects to, or different different challenges, and some of them are intellectual because you have to f you have to to find solutions to technical problems and find and practice a lot until you can do certain things. And part of that process is understanding what's going on, what is working, what is not working. And so there is sort of an intellectual side, and also when studying music, there is. There is the analytical side of looking at the score, analyzing it, trying to understand the composer's intentions and that sort of thought process. But then the actual performance is, I think, where the emotional side comes to the forefront because at that point you, are, you shouldn't be thinking anymore about like all, the, all those details that you did during the preparation. It's more about communicating the, the character and emotion of the music. And I think that's what I try to focus on when I'm on stage. I think ultimately the thing that's, if I had to pick one thing that's, it's, I can't really pick one or the other because uh, if you don't have, if you don't, if you don't use your head when you play, then it's, then what you play might not really, might not really work. It might not really make any sense, it might not have structure. It's, what wouldn't work. And if it has no heart, then I think it's not worth listening to in a way. So, um, but I think that the, the emotional side is the one that communicates to an audience that might make the piece or the performance special and memorable is if there was, if, 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 if they felt that emotion.